is there any truth to the rumor that Ric Flair and Kerry Von Erich wrestled a one-hour Broadway completely wasted? <laughs> Flair drunk and Kerry on cocaine? With a question mark there. That wasn't my improv. That was his question. Uh, no, that is that is not. Well, it, somebody has taken an actual fact and run with it. Imagine that. It was... <sighs> Sometimes I think it was New Year's Eve, uh, but sometimes I think it was the next Friday or the next Monday, rather, the week after New Year, New Year's. But at any rate, sometime the first part of 1985, one during that holiday week there or just after in Fort Worth at the Will Rogers Coliseum, the main event was Ric Flair versus Kerry Von Erich. I know because I was in the locker room because we had just got there and the Midnight Express was on the show earlier that night. And. The place, usually Fort Worth for the Monday night TV taping that wasn't an earth shaking, you know, event, it looked like a, the crowd looked like a piss hole in a snowbank. You know, it was about a $10,000 house or whatever, which would have translated in those days to maybe 1,500 or 2,000 people, but in this goddamn 6,000 seat building, it, it just, it was not a great atmosphere. However, on this night, since did I mention the world title between Ric Flair and Kerry Von Erich was on the line, it was sold out. The house was like, I'd have to look at my book, but 60 grand or whatever the fuck. And it was, it was hanging from the rafters, as they say. And then there was some type of commotion because, and I was actually, I was riding by myself because I'd wanted to stay and, and watch the match. Whereas sometimes Bobby and Dennis might want to leave after their day. Okay, whatever. Right. So I know there's commotion before the match. They can't find Kerry. And they're looking all over the place for Kerry in the locker rooms. And it ain't that big a locker room area in the Will Rogers Coliseum. And because it was the, the fairgrounds over there, there was a cattle chute. And then a ca behind the, that all the guys used to park in right behind the dressing room entrances of the Coliseum. And then there was cattle barns on the other side of that. So there was this giant under this one roof cattle fucking display area. And they go out and start looking around in there and somebody finds Carrie. He's gone to sleep in his car. And the Carrie, your music's going to play in about five minutes or whatever. It's like, it did not, maybe even closer than that. And they get him out of the car <laughs> and get him into the, and off he goes and they play his music. And here we go. And I, it was obviously not cocaine because I'll, I'll give you a couple of the spots. They did the old deal where Kerry took fucking flare down, had him in a hammer lock on the mat where they do. He would do the handstand and then come down and drop the knee on flares arm. Yeah, sure. He did the handstand and just kind of fell on all the way over right on his back. Boom. <laughs> so, so flare flare jerked his arm up like Kerry was jerking it on the hammer lock board, but actually Kerry just fell over. And one time Flair shot him off and went to hip toss carry and Flair hip tossed carry, but Kerry's right foot never left the mat. He just went over sideways and it was, it, it was like he was underwater. So it was definitely not cocaine. And, and finally they went an hour Broadway and in front of this sellout crowd. And because we did TV in Fort Worth that would air the following Saturday night on, 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 what was it? Uh, was it KTVT or whatever channel 11, <laughs> the biggest, you know, independent station in the state of Texas from 10 to midnight on Saturday aired the two hour wrestling program from Monday night in Fort Worth. And they were going to air the first 10 minutes of Carrie and Flair's match. That's what they had left. And then they'd go off the air saying, folks, you should have been here live. Right. Mark Lorenz had to do the voiceover uh, during Carrie's entrance saying, ladies and gentlemen, we wanted to let you know that Carrie Von Erich wrestled this match against doctor's orders, horribly sick with a fever of 103 from the flu. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't want to not only lose his chance at the world title, but let his fans in Fort Worth down that had come to see him. So he was under the weather in this title defense. And they voiced that and, and then showed the first 10 minutes, including the fucking handstand waller over. And so then after the match is over, after an hour of that, Flair comes in the fucking through the curtain and into the fucking locker room. And there's Ken Mantell, the booker sitting there at the monitor that was right there in between, right at the, where you went out in between the baby face and the heel locker room. And he had the NWA belt and he pitched it at fucking Ken Mantell. Mantell caught it. And Flair said, here, you work with him the rest of the week. 
And in wow. fucking, he's taking his, and you know, so and I guess they, you know, they have all reconciled after that, but it was not a, a pleasant night in Fort Worth. What, I mean, how do you address that after the fact? I mean, he did work with Kerry so many times after that, although that is really the beginning of the end. I mean, 85 is the beginning of the end of the Von Erichs relationship with the NWA, so there's only a little bit more time he would work with Kerry. What do you say? And, and, and things like that, you know, probably hastened it up on, because it wasn't, it, it, it was mutual in that when World Class pulled out of the NWA, it was because they wanted to create their own champion. So a Von, a Von Eric could, could be the champion. But one of the reasons why that, they couldn't get dates. That, well, yes, and they couldn't get dates. But one of the reasons they couldn't get dates is because of shit like that happening. And one of the reasons why the Von Erichs couldn't be champion is because of shit like that happening. So it was so when they pulled out of the NWA, it wasn't like the NWA was scratching at their legs. Go, please don't go. It was like, oh, yeah, gee. And realistically, working with Kevin, because those would have been the two top guys Flair would have worked with. And he worked with Kevin at Texas Stadium. You were there. Yeah. Tell me if I'm wrong. If Flair worked with Kevin, more than likely he got more bruises in that match than any other <laughs> match he had that month, right? Well, you know, but I don't, I don't know that Flair didn't enjoy working with all of the boys. I've, I've never, you know, it, it, it was probably a little rougher than working with Steamboat, but he knew the, how, how well they drew down there in Texas, but he wouldn't probably wanted to have taken Kevin across country with him. 